and welcome back to Motorshed. I'm Steve Fox. Today we're going to the MotoGP at Silverstone. Uh, we're camping for three days at the Woodland campsite. So I'm just going to give you an insight into this experience. Okay, here we go then. It's MotoGP time and we're on our way to Silverstone in that. So uh, hopefully we'll get there before dark. Spoiler alert, the race didn't actually go ahead. So for the first time since 1980, uh, a MotoGP race was cancelled. Um, this at the time was apparently due to the weather, but a lot of races have gone ahead with worse weather, even at Silverstone. So the real reason that the race was cancelled was due to the track conditions. Uh, not because it was raining too much, but because the track was collecting too much water. So there were puddles of water uh, going into turns. The track was resurfaced in early 2018 and seemingly the contractors uh, didn't do a very good job uh, in this department. Uh, after just one Formula One race this year, you can see patches in the track which are flattened off, compacted. So essentially, don't let any water through at all and it becomes like driving on glass. So very dangerous for motorcycles, um, as proven by Tito Rabat's crash in uh, qualifying where he broke his leg entirely in all three places possible. Um, so not a good situation. So the race didn't go ahead. There are a lot of extremely angry fans uh, because of the way it was handled. Uh, nobody was given any idea of when or if the race would go ahead. <clears throat> the weather was bad. So the, there are a lot of people waiting around in pretty miserable conditions. And uh, that resulted in a, a catastrophe. So here it's uh, Friday morning so there's still quite a lot of people to come which is why there's a fair bit of empty space on the site. Time to get myself showered. shower done with then let's uh, go see what we can find So this is where we were situated, the caravan with uh, an awning.
Right, ready to head out to the track now then. Um, might want a hoodie. No? Better? So there were tractors to take you uh, to and from the track. Um, we found from where we were it took exactly the same amount of time to walk as it did to go on the tractor due to the route it takes so um, probably not really worth it <laughs> unless you're just being lazy or want to save your feet there's plenty of food stalls so you can get uh, Burgers and hot dogs, pizzas, things like that, but also sweets and coffee and anything you could want really. All at extortionate prices, but you'd expect that, wouldn't you? So as well as the racing, you've got a lot to keep you occupied at Silverstone. So loads of trade stands selling uh, team gear, uh, a lot of it at pretty decent prices. So I went and picked myself up a new Marquez t-shirt. I've got three Marquez for these, but I didn't have a t-shirt, so had to be done. Most of the motorcycle manufacturers turned up to display their latest wares. So a lot of nice bikes on display. I've just picked out a few of my favourites. I really loved the uh, R1 in these colours. Harking back to the uh, original 1998 model. Looked really cool. Only Valentino Rossi would bring his own mega store. As well as the 20, 25 other Rossi merchandise stands at Silverstone, there was this colossal thing. I felt sorry for the ice cream men. They weren't selling many ice creams due to the weather and I bet they paid an absolute fortune for the pitch. We were fortunate enough to go for a pit walk. A little disappointingly, most of the garages were closed, uh, but some of them did have the courtesy to stay open so we could actually see something. Um, here you can see the speed up team uh, assembling one of their bikes. No prizes for guessing which garage this massive crowd was outside. <laughs> Fortunately, the garage I really wanted to see wasn't open. Screens up. <laughs> Thank you. 
so even though a lot of the garages were shut I would still recommend the pit walk it's uh, only a £20 option uh, it's not something you get to see all the time so I really enjoyed it but it was nice to see some of the bikes up close and uh, hear them turning over from cold the caravan for us and we settled in for the night with a few beers. stands as you can see everybody dressed up in their most waterproof clothing it was very cold it was very wet there are a lot of very miserable faces people trying to stay positive um, but we didn't have an awful lot to be positive about because we we're getting absolutely nothing from Silverstone or the organizers uh, as to what was going on race day and as you can see it's raining the race has been moved forward to 11.30 from 1 o'clock and it's pretty miserable. This is just light rain, it's expected to get a lot heavier so um, I suspect most of these people will disappear after the MotoGP race, won't stick around for the Moto2 and Moto3. Uh, so yeah, see how we get on. Hello and welcome to Umbrella Fest 2018. We are just waiting around for a race to commence, uh, a race that should have been at half eleven this morning. It is now just gone two. We still had no racing at all at Silverstone. Only hardcore fans are left in the, in the place now. Uh, a lot of people have gone home, a lot of people just drenched to the bone, sick of it. So they've all gone. So only hardcore fans left, uh, including us. closest we got to any racing at Silverstone this weekend. So, update, we are leaving. Uh, there's absolutely zero chance that this race is going ahead. It is shocking weather, it's getting worse. So, off we go, what a wash out. At the caravan, uh, the weather is shocking. As you can see, it's really windy, it's really rainy. 
most people have gone home. The campsite is pretty uh, empty now in comparison to what it was. So we're just going to uh, get rid of all these soaking wet clothes and have a cup of tea. So my thoughts then on Silverstone and the campsite. So starting with Woodland Campsite, uh, I thought it was fantastic facility. Um, loads of room, uh, lots of options. So whether you're staying in a tent, caravan with awning, uh, camper van, you know, you were all catered for whether you wanted this modern electricity stuff or not. Uh, there are options available. So that was really good. It wasn't expensive either. So it was definitely way cheaper than staying in a hotel nearby. There was plenty of entertainment on site. So from sort of eight o'clock-ish through to midnight or whatever, different bands on. Uh, there was comedy, all sorts of things really, uh, to keep you occupied in the evenings. Um, bars, plenty of places to grab a bite to eat, uh, and all at much better prices than you got trackside. For me, the main benefit of staying in the campsite rather than a hotel is the fact you didn't have to do any driving. So you can have a few beers uh, and not have to worry about it. Uh, also, you didn't have to drive into and out of the circuit at the start and end of each day. Obviously, you get a lot of queues. That's part and parcel of it. Not having to go through that was superb. So when we arrived on the Thursday night, straight in, no traffic. When we left on the Monday morning, straight out, no traffic anywhere. So that was really good. So it saves you a lot of time there. And if you like me and hate queuing for anything... Uh, it's something you don't have to deal with, but it's awesome. What do I think about Silverstone in general? It's a tough one. If you'd have asked me a year ago, I'd have probably had a completely different answer for you. But in my opinion, Silverstone are in a lot of trouble uh, with this track issue. Um, so the race was cancelled not because of the weather, but because the track couldn't handle the weather. Um, since it's resurfacing uh, it pulls way too much uh, it's very dangerous the uh, tarmac is kind of binded together to create patches uh, where aquaplaning is just rife and it's like riding on glass I imagine <clears throat> they need to get it sorted ASAP um, because essentially they cannot currently host a motorcycle event because if it rains it's going to get cancelled it's as simple as that um, so they really do need to get it sorted uh, ASAP so as the UK's largest racetrack I really do hope they get it sorted because potentially it means no British MotoGP no British F1 um, I believe next year's F1 will be the last at Silverstone anyway from what they say um, so to have no MotoGP or F1, the, the two largest uh, motoring events on the calendar, uh, is, is pretty poor, pretty bad for the UK. Um, I mean, there, there were a lot of people that have travelled from abroad uh, in the campsite that we were at. Um, so people are clearly coming from quite afar, um, and that's all going into our economy. So um, it will be a shame if we lose it. So the cancelled race aside, what do I think of Silverstone as a track? So the track itself I think is superb. I've driven it, um, it is a lot of fun. Uh, the track layout is, is fantastic, uh, I really like it. From a viewing perspective though, it's terrible, it really is. Most of the track is covered in a huge wire fence so everything that you're seeing pretty much certainly from a general admission point of view uh, is always through uh, a series of small hexagons um, so you're not going to get great photos uh, and if you're in a grandstand yes you can see clearer unobstructed views but the grandstands are so far back 
from the track in most places that you know you're, you're seeing very small objects move by uh, it's not quite as immersive as a lot of the other tracks in the UK so from that point of view definitely gets a thumbs down but of course I'll continue to go to events at Silverstone because it tends to host the best events because as a facility as a whole there's nothing else that really compares to Silverstone So all in all a failed weekend but we still had a really good time. Uh, the campsite was fantastic um, and at the end of the day it was just a jolly with uh, the wife and family and yeah really enjoyed it. It's just a shame we didn't get to see any racing. I absolutely love the new Ducati Diavel. It just looks awesome from every angle. I really want one. <laughs>